Muadim. Muadim means appointed times, and there are seven appointed times prescribed by the Most High Himself. These Muadim are designed to point His set apart ones to the person and work of Messiah. Each Moedim is listed in the book of Waikra, traditionally called the book of Leviticus. Many of the connections of the Moedim are not difficult to see in relation to Messiah. He was born to redeem the creation of the Most High, Elohim Yah, and to offer everlasting life to all whom Elohim would call. One cannot simply observe the Christmas holiday during the festive pagan time of the year and act as though they are worshiping Messiah. The birth of Messiah is about redemption indeed, and not about holiday, giving gifts, or birthday celebration. The everlasting Father's eternal purpose was to send Messiah as the living sacrifice to redeem his creation. There is absolutely no text of scripture in the canon or the apocrypha that suggests celebrating the birth of Messiah. The Christmas observance coexists with all forms of paganism and therefore violates every principle of scripture. There is absolutely no scripture to even suggest celebrating Messiah's birthday. The purpose of the Most High sending Messiah as the Redeemer of mankind is an everlasting purpose with everlasting consequences. The consequences are clearly spelled out in the scriptures reaping eternal damnation or eternal bliss. The birth of Messiah was not a last minute decision of the Most High, rather an eternal act before time began. The counsel of Yahuwah's will involved Messiah's birth and connected with the Moedim of Elohim as shown in the scripture. There are seven Moedim that Elohim himself regard as belonging to him. He is the originator of the Moedim and he is the Elohim that determined and arranged them in certain order. Passover, Pesach, Nisan 14 and 15. In the first new moon on the 14th day of the new moon, between the evenings is the Pesach or Passover to Yahuwah. The 14th day of the first month, the Israelites were instructed to mark their dwelling places with the blood of a lamb on the two side post and entrance of their door. The blood served as a sign to the death angel to literally pass over their dwelling places when he swooped through Egypt to slay the firstborn son of the Egyptians. This Moedim served as the Moedim of deliverance from the captivity of the Egyptians. In the Brit Hadashah, the blood of the Lamb of the Most High serves as the indicator for the enemy of the faith to pass over the set-apart ones as they are marked with the deliverance of the Most High Elohim. The identification of the blood of the Lamb of Mashiach is not simply a Christianity thing but rather a covenant act of the Most High, Elohim. Muadim Unleavened Bread, Matzah On the fifteenth day of this new moon is the festival of Matzah to Yahuwah. Seven days you eat unleavened bread. Yeast or leaven symbolizes sin and evil in the Bible. To eat unleavened bread for seven days indicated an esteemed walk with the Most High Elohim. In the Brit HaKadoshah, the unleavened bread is in the person of Messiah. Several places in the scriptures, he is referred to as the bread of life. In Corinthian Aleph, Shaul speaks of leaven in this fashion. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the entire lump? Therefore cleanse out the old leaven, so that you are a new lump, as you are unleavened. For also Messiah, 
our Passover was offered for us. In other words, you cannot have a little sin without it corrupting your entire spiritual life. The unleavened bread in scripture represents a clean slate with the Most High, and he commands that we walk in that way by observing his esteemed Modin. First Fruits, Paryut Rishun Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, and you shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priests. This is where the falseness of Christianity has embraced the celebration of Easter, or Ishtar. First Fruits acknowledges the fertility of the land that the Most High gave to his people. They would bring the early crops of their spring planting and wave the sheaf before Yahuwah. First Fruits had nothing to do with the pagan celebration of Easter, a strictly pagan practice with pagan roots, whereas First Fruits is commanded by the Most High himself. Muadim. Pentecost, Shabbat, until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, you count 50 days. Then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahuwah. Bring from your dwellings for a wave offering two loaves of bread of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour. They are baked with leaven, first fruits to Yahuwah. These two loaves was a symbol of the body of Yahusha being comprised of both Hebrew and and Gentile, and further reveals the first four spring Moedims being fulfilled in the first half of the coming of Messiah. He was crucified on Pesach and buried on unleavened bread. He was raised on first fruits, and at the time of Pentecost, he sent the Ruach HaKodesh to keep the set apart ones. The remaining fall Moedims are yet to be fulfilled in the calendar of the Most High, Elohim. Yeah. Muadim. Trumpets. Yom Taru. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a rest, a remembrance of blowing of trumpets, a set apart gathering. The Most High is apparently fond of the use of trumpets because they are used throughout the scriptures to announce a significant event on his calendar. The sound of the trumpet was also used to announce war or battle. The sound of the trumpet was used in the crumbling of the walls of Jericho, Jericho in the book of Yohashua. The trumpet sound will raise the dead in Messiah and take away the set-apart ones at the parousia of Messiah. Corinthians, Olive 15, 51-53, 1 Corinthians. The harvest will be complete and the set-apart ones will be removed from the field. Muadim Atonement Yom Kippurim On the tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a set-apart gathering for you. And you shall afflict your beings and shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. The body of Messiah cannot fulfill this Muadim, nor is the body required to. The body of Messiah is not absolutely innocent, but his body has been exonerated by the blood of the Lamb of Elohim. Shaul made it clear when he said, 
Therefore, cleanse out the old leaven so that you are a new lump, as you are unleavened for also Messiah, our Passover, was offered for us. In other words, Messiah is the ultimate sacrifice for us. The atonement has been made through the shed blood of Messiah. The day of atonement will find its complete fulfillment at the return of Messiah. Muadim. Tabernacles, Sukkot. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the festival of booths for seven days to Yahuwah. Hebrews built booths outside their dwelling places to worship the Most High. These booths represented the act of the Most High being their shelter. In the world to come, Yahuwah will be the eternal shelter for all his people. The great prophet Zechariah, Zechariah speaks of the Muadim of Tabernacles during the Kingdom Age. This Muadim can be mimicked by the body of Messiah but will not find its complete fulfillment and appreciate its total ramifications until Messiah returns. The Muadim of Tabernacles will be the eternal Muadim enjoyed by the whole world and all secular holidays and celebrations will be eternally banned. Thank you.